Hello, thank you for checking out my video today. Today's video, I want to talk about designing an 8086 uh, uh, PCB, basically. Building it here on the uh, breadboard, where I usually prototype most of my projects until they get too uh, large. Um, I'm going to put the uh, schematics uh, on GitHub, and I'll put the link in the description for that. So you can look at how this is actually wired. Um, a lot of these videos like this one, they're actually for my reference. Um, so in a year from now, if I want to recreate or build on this, I can review what I did here so that I don't uh, forget, basically. Anyway, um, I'll fire it up. So the basics of this is I have a... 8086 processor running from an 8-bit bus. This is the address bus. You've got the lower four bits. I skipped the next four bits, so then it's uh, A8 through A15 here. Um, in slower speeds, like if you single step it, um, you can watch it count up here. If you notice, bit or A0 is uh, not on because um, it's going in even numbers, being a 16-bit read. So, the way this is connected, I'll start with the processor. Right now, just your power grounds connector is supposed to be. It's in minimum mode, so 33 is connected to high. The hold pin is connected low, so that doesn't interfere. And then the interrupt, uh, non-maskable and the uh, interrupt pin are both tied low. The clock is connected to this eight megahertz uh, oscillator. And in reference to my previous video, the purpose of this particular bus is um, to run it at a different speed. So this is not running at eight megahertz. Um, on the processor, I've got my reset connected to an 8284's reset output. This is the uh, clock for the bus controller. And then I've got the ready pin connected to the ready trigger. And then from there, I've got my interrupt acknowledge. I'll just go up the side here. Interrupt acknowledge goes up to the bus logic. Um, trying to go from memory here what's after that. So... You got your address latch. Which connects to your address uh, chips and it resets the interrupt logic. Or sorry, the ready logic. And then you got your data enable connected to your data transceiver. And your data direction which goes to your transceiver and to the bus logic. And then you've got, so there's your direction, and then you should have IO mem that goes to the bus logic. From there, my bank high enable is connected to a latch. It latches just like an address. So, for real basic normal stuff on an 8086, you've got your, your uh, lower 8-bit bus transceiver, your upper 8-bit bus transceiver, your lower address A0 through 7, your upper A8 through 15, and then this would be A16 through 19, and it, uh, bank high enable. Uh, I don't have address uh, 16 through 19 connected. They're not connecting any lights or anything. Um, on the ready trigger, um, I've got an LSO4 that inverts the address latch. And it goes to the clear pin on uh, 74 LSM4. The data pin's connected high. The clock pin is your trigger, and that connects to the bus ROM. And then the pre is connected high, and ground, of course, on your power for the LS704. And then I also go to a counter, and the 
address uh, latch enable is inverted and resets it as well. So when a bus cycle starts, it triggers the ALE pin to reset the ready trigger. So that puts it in a not ready state and it starts the counter at zero. And then the, and, and that's how that works. So then the way that the bus logic works, I've got two ROMs here. These are not ROMs for the processor. These are ROMs for the bus. And they just hold the, I guess you could say the microcode to run the bus. So the reason why there's two is because I needed more than eight outputs. Um, and I, so I just program into each one for the outputs. This one here is connected to the ready trigger. So uh, the output zero when it goes high. So it can be high when it starts. It's always like, it's always left high. Um, but when it starts, it's got to drop to low, then go back to high to say it's ready. Um, and then you'll have your, I'll put a IOMAM, a, a read, a write, and uh, a pseudo address latch that'll go out to the ISA bus. Um, also, when you're doing, it, it, kind of jumping all over here, but when you're doing like a 16-bit or 8-bit to 16-bit read, every cycle needs to have an address latch. So that's why you need an address latch there. Um, that'll leave a couple more pins exposed. I, I'm sure they have a purpose. I just off the top of my head, that's the ones that are needed. Then this one here controls, I've got a bridge here that I designed this years ago, but it's got a, a transceiver, a transceiver, a transceiver, a latch. This latch needs to come off. We don't need that. That's, that's excess. Um, so this would be your lower half of the 16 bit and you can either, by controlling, you've got, you, you can be transparent through the transceiver or you can latch a value to the latch so that you can grab your first byte, low, latch, and then you've got a bridge transceiver that bridges 8 to 16, and you've, you've got a transceiver here. And I'm actually looking in a, in a pure... Um, if you're only in an 8-bit environment ever, you could get rid of that transceiver, but you have a transceiver here for, and you've got your outputs for your 16-bit address up here. And originally when I built this, I put a latch on here because I was thinking I would need to latch the output, latch the output, and then go, which I, I may still do, but it's very redundant. Even on the uh, PCAT, they they didn't latch the second. They, they did latch the first one. They used a different chip. I want to say it was like uh, 646 or something, an LS 646. But they didn't latch the upper one because once you're doing a read for the upper, you're done reading, and then you can just turn, then you can say, I'm ready, and you've got the data. Going out's a lot easier. You just use your, you nullify your, your latch, transceiver out, um, right, then open your bridge, out, right. Um, so the bridge is a big part of this. And then the second ROM is con controlling the bridge. It takes for each chip, it's it's hooked up to two pins per chip. And like I said, not counting this latch here. Um, there may be some pins that we can uh, merge together, but you do need to be able to turn each chip on and off independently. I guess like the direction pin could, uh, for your transceivers could all be merged into one. Um, Well, except for your, your bridge, obviously. Um, so that's the gist of it. It, it basically uh, it triggers a, a, a bus cycle. The address latch is what indicates the beginning cycle. It clears the ready. It starts the counter at zero. Um, as it counts up, it goes through code on both of these, outputting the correct signals to the bridge and then to the read-write pins on your memory or I.O. Um, some of the extra stuff on here, I just have a, another counter here, and I actually run, 
I'm not coming off a click right now. I'm going on a P click, which is half a click. And I'm using the rail. Um, dividing it down only to ripple out um, back over just to slow it down. Otherwise, all you would just see is just these. The, the top one might be flickering. Um, it's just to slow it down. So that's there. Um, I'm going to show the code for a second. So the code in each one of these chips is actually, it's the same file. But what I did was address input 7 is tied high on this chip and low on this chip. So chip 1, chip 2. Um, let me rotate my camera here without shaking up the whole world. So what it does is you can see I've got chip 1's code here. And then I've got chips two codes here, and I times 80 times minus the code length and just fill it with F. And what that does, it allows you to just put it in one file, but also I can look straight across and go, okay, this is what chip one's doing, this is what chip's doing, two's doing, chip one, chip two, chip one, chip two, chip. And that, that way you're not like two files trying to scroll together and making sure it's all right. This works out pretty clean, and I did have an extra input. Um, obviously, as you can see, I've only written, and this this code's not even correct for the chip one. Um, there's no signals in that. There's just the reset. You can see pin one drops to zero, or sorry, output zero drops to zero, and then goes high at the very end there to say I'm ready. Um, let me go back to the board. So all the inputs are used on these ROMs. The only ones that are not connected right now are the upper two uh, address lines. And these are 32K ROMs. Now the upper two address lines, I think I've got everything connected. So the interrupt acknowledge is connected. And that's just so you know, there's interrupt happening. The IO is connected, the directions. So the IO and direction tells you if it's a, a memory read or write or I'll read write. The interrupt uh, just tells you it's interrupt. And then you've got address zero and bank high enable going in to tell you if it's a 16-bit or an 8-bit read, high or low. Um, now, obviously, there's certain states of these, of the combinations going into the chips that are invalid. Like, you couldn't have both A, A0 and bank high, uh, both high because you're not reading anything. Um, but also, um, so anyway, so we got those going in there and then the upper two lines will go to IO 16 chip select and memory 16 chip select, which comes from a 16 bit ISA bus. And that tells you, it tells the bus if what's plugged into it is a 16 bit uh, device. Or an 8-bit device um, so that's what the remaining are on there I haven't seen any other uh, lines that I need to connect yet I do have right now on this particular board I've only got four of the the counter lines connected on my schematic I actually have eight I have two counters on there so it'll go up to well seven now that I've eliminated uh, a7 to be a chip select uh, chip one or chip two. That leaves you with, you know, a seven bit address to work with of code. That's a lot of cycles that you can put in there on your uh, on your bus. You'll, you'll never use that many. Um, allows room for like weight states and that. But worst case scenario, I can grab A6 and maybe A5. I, I wouldn't want to get too much smaller than that on my counter, but if I needed to add more chip selects. Anyway, um, like I said, I'll have the uh, schematics on GitHub. I'll put the link in the description. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment. Thanks.